of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. In the first episode, you remember, Clint Barlow, brilliant young operator of the International Secret Police, was called to his chief's headquarters for details of a new case concerning the activities of the octopus, the most dangerous criminal alive. With Clint was Barney Dunlap, his right-hand man. During their absence, a member of the octopus gang came to Clint's rooms, and in spite of the presence of Speed Gibson, Clint's 15-year-old nephew, sought to go through the operator's papers. Speed knocked the man unconscious with the model of the China Clipper that he was constructing, and now we find Speed, Clint, and Barney in the chief's office with their sullen prisoner, Blackie Spears. Why did you go to Barlow's room, Blackie? I ain't talking. He did plenty of talking to me, Chief Riley. He knew that Clint and Barney were on their way here. Said our telephone wires had been tapped, and he'd heard you talking to Clint. And he arrived shortly after Clint and Barney left, huh? Yes, sir. Well, that means he must have been in the same building. Maybe he took a room there, too. But why? Why was my phone line tapped? Now, how did he know anything was in the wind? The octopus has ways of knowing things, Clint. Almost before anyone else knows about them. Blackie, it'll be a little easier on you if you'll tell us what you know. You're in a secret police. Supposing you find all that out for yourself. Let me smack him one, Chief. No, Barney. Keep your fist to yourself. We'll keep Blackie Spears with us for a while. Maybe he won't talk to us, but neither will he be able to talk to his gang or be able to get word to the octopus as to what's happened. You can't keep me here. No, no. can't we? You force an entrance into my rooms, admit to my nephew that you tap my phone wires, then you go through my private papers. We can keep you here, all right. Yeah? Well, if it hadn't been for that kid slugging me with his aeroplane, you guys never would have touched me. I'll get you for that, Speed Gibson. You just try anything and I'll sock you again. That's the Speed aren't going to help you any, Blackie. Take him out, Barney. Tell Kelly to put him in solitary. Yes, sir. Come on, tough guy. You can't do this to me, I tell you. The gang will rub you out. Ah, save your breath. We don't scare you. Well, I guess that takes care of Blackie Spears, all right. Yeah, thanks to you, Speed. If you hadn't used your wits, he'd have gotten away or perhaps shot it out with Clint and Barney when they returned before he expected them. <laughs> That's right, Chief Riley. And all because Barney forgot his hat. Well, he made me sore, going through Clint's papers like that. And the secret police books I've been studying say that you should never give a criminal an even break. <laughs> Something to that effect, Speed. The idea is that the criminal never gives the detective a chance, so it's better to capture him first, disarm him, and then start talking. I sure smashed my china clipper on his head. <laughs> Didn't do his head any good, either. <laughs> Has a lump on it about the size of an egg. Speed, how would you like to fly in the real china clipper? The real clipper? Oh, gee, Chief. Honest? Now, wait, now hold on there, Speed. Now, what do you mean, Chief? Well, you remember I said something over the phone about using speed on this job, Clint? Mm -hmm. And I said no. Oh, Clint. So, supposing you hear the whole story before making a decision, Clint. Our Far East operator sent word by code that the octopus has reared his ugly head in China. Hong Kong, to be exact. Mm, what's his racket this time? Smuggling. Dope and natives. Running dope in and natives out. Doing it on a wholesale scale. His enormous and very effective organization makes his illegal business a lot safer than most legal businesses. And far more profitable. And the best way to combat the evil is at the source. China. Mm -hmm. You want Barney and me to break it wide open, huh? Yes. You're to take the next clipper ship. It leaves day after tomorrow. I've already reserved passage for you. You proceed to Hong Kong at once. Good. Doesn't give us much time, but I've done more and less. Lucky, though, you reserved the passages. Yes, for you, Barney, and Speed. Oh, boy! Oh, now, listen, Chief. Now, Speed doesn't fit into this picture. I wouldn't think of taking him into that hotbed of danger. He's already in it, Clint. I said before that the octopus has ways of knowing things. Perhaps he already knows of Speed's part in Blackie's capture. Once you leave for China, no matter where, you may send your nephew. His life will be in actual danger. Well, that's true. On but... the other hand, the octopus will never dream that he's traveling with you. In fact, he can have no knowledge that you're crossing on the China Clipper. And this is where your uncanny knowledge of makeup may bring you close to the octopus. Oh, you mean I should uh, use a disguise? Huh? Well, you've never been yourself on any job you've undertaken. That's been one of your secrets of success. No criminal knows how the real Clint Barlow looks except Blackie Spears. And his knowledge won't do him any good for a long time. That's right, Clint. You know more about makeup than any actor. Oh, you can change your whole appearance by just adding a little to your nose, or changing your eyebrows, or taping your eyes. Yes, the stage lost an excellent actor. And the secret police gained its best operator. 
But I not only want you to travel under an assumed face and personality, Clint, but Barney and Speed as well. No one is to know who you are. Your safety lies in your lost identity. Well, it's an old story to me, Chief, but as for Speed here, Please I Please let don't me know. go, Clint. I can help out in all sorts of ways. I'm counting on you, Speed. Your quick thinking in Blackie's case convinced me that you can help us in the capture of the octopus. You'll never be in the front line, so to speak. That'll keep him out of actual danger, Clint. But you as a boy will be able to see and learn things that an adult cannot. You bet I will. Oh, gee, Clint. Can I go? Can I? Well, after what Chief Riley has said about the danger of leaving you here, and if I can use makeup on you, uh... All right. Yes, you can go. I, I can't see anything else now. We, Oh, boy, what adventure this is going to be. Not an adventure, Speed. But hard, dangerous work. The odds are tremendously against capturing the octopus. But you can't fail. And now, I have here full details as to the course I've laid out for you, Clint. Oh, but first I must swear Speed into the International Secret Police. Are you ready to take the oath, Speed? I... I'm ready, sir. Then listen carefully. And see if you're still willing to join our force after hearing the oath. Yes, sir. Raise your right hand. Do you, Speed Gibson, as a member of the International Secret Police, promise to obey and protect law and order in your own country or wherever else your duties may carry you? Will you cooperate with the foreign police after you have fulfilled your mission? And will you, above all else, recognize the code of the secret police? Courage, honor, and silence. And not betray it in any manner whatsoever? I promise, sir. <sighs> You've bitten off a large hunk there, fellow. And I welcome our newest and youngest member. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> What's going on here? Barney, I'm a member of the International Secret Police now, and I'm going with you to capture the octopus. Yeah, huh? That's right, Barney. After we get our orders from the Chief, we're off. Off where? Alameda. After I change our appearance with makeup. Alameda? You mean... We're taking the China Clipper day after tomorrow. <laughs> The clipper speed. Isn't it a beauty? Look at that wing spread. Yeah, I hope them wings are spread enough to take us where we're going. <laughs> oh, God, gun this mustache. <laughs> What's the matter, Barney? Oh, this phony misplaced eyebrow you stuck on my upper lip pickles. <laughs> it sure looks like it grew there, though, Barney. And that squint that Clint gave you. I never know you in a million years. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know you either. What with them specs you're wearing and the way Clint made your nose thinner by shading it with grease paint, you look real studious. Not like the guy that knocked Blackie over the head with a clipper model. <laughs> and Clint looks kind of foreign, don't he? With his hair dyed black and curled. He darkened his skin, too, and wearing kind of foreign clothes. Like a Frenchman. Well, now, don't forget that I'm supposed to be your French tutor, Speed. Now, wait. Have you got the whole story straight? I think so. Barney here's supposed to be my dad. We're from Texas. Yeah. He's kind of rich from his oil wells and wants me to grow up a gentleman. And you're supposed to help make me one, teaching me French and manners. The whole thing's crazy, if you ask me. Yeah, but nobody's asking you. You just stick to that story. Uh, what's your name? My... Now, I know you're crazy. Oh, not your real one, your assumed name. Oh, um, Fletcher, Jim Fletcher. And speed here is Earl. <laughs> Earl Wells, get it? <laughs> yes, and I'm Pierre Dorset. Now, I'm going to speak with a very slight French accent. And uh, you'd better use a drawl, Barney. Well, what should I use? Oh, you talk to you all with you, Speed. It'll be safer because you're not as old in the game as we are. You might forget to keep up an accent. Well, anyhow, you're getting an education from your French tutor and by traveling around the world. Hot ziggity! Uh oh, now don't say things like that. In fact, the less you say in public, the better. Kind of carries out the student idea. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to be thinking instead of talking. Say, they're winding up the clipper motors. Yeah, won't be long now. Then I'm warming them up. Gee, I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. Just think, I'm really going to fly in a China clipper. Wait a minute, what's wrong? That man in that blue shirt suit standing right over there. Remember him, Barney? Say... Wasn't he in on that jewel smuggling racket three years ago? Right. One of the cleverest smugglers in the business. 
But we caught him, and I thought he was safe behind the bars for a good long time. He must have been paroled. Yeah, but why is he going on the China Clipper at this time? Say, I wonder if he's going in with the octopus on his smuggling. Hmm, we don't even have to wait to get to China before we start meeting up with that gang. Well, maybe I'm all wrong. Maybe his going is pure coincidence. And then again, maybe not. You think he'll recognize you and Barney, Clint? No, Steve. Our disguise is entirely different. On the board for the China Clipper. Stop at Honolulu, Midway Island, Wake Island, Guam, Manila, and the Orient. Gee, now we can go aboard. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Steve. Let our friend in the Blue Surge get aboard first. What happens when we get to Manila? We'll wait and see what happens aboard the Clipper first, Barney. Can we go now, Clint? The flight crew has gone aboard. Yes, but remember, from now on, when there's anyone else within hearing distance, you're Earl Fletcher, Barney is Jim Fletcher, and I'm Pierre Dorsey. You got it? Yes, Monsieur Dorsey. Monsieur Dorsey. Now watch yourself. Here come some other passengers and... Wait a minute. What do you see? That man in the blue serge suit. He's talking to that little guy in the checkered suit. Yeah, and they're looking straight at us. Clint, that guy has spotted us. He's recognized us. They're going to keep us from getting aboard. He's calling that policeman. Come on, we've got to make it. (laughs) 